Hi, welcome to episode seven. Um, before we get into this, I just want to thank um, Rob and Kyle from the UK Signboards for producing these brilliant stencils for me. Um, now I've got an old overhead projector and I use this as a light box. So what I did here was I, I traced onto the masking film, um, the transfer tape, um, so that when I peeled this back and then transferred this onto the curved surface of the dashboard section, I was able to make a nice registered mark so I could then line up any further stencils that I was gonna produce and I'll show you that shortly. So the needles are in, the paint's all ready. Let's get painting. Yes, we're all ready, I think. As ready as we can never be. Um, and what I'm gonna do first of all is I've, uh, I've put some white in here. Um, this is uh, ETAC FX HS502, ETAC EFX. And we've put some of that in there. And we've put also put in here some uh, ETAC EFX base, just to thin it down a little bit. And some water. And a little bit of this Liquitex airbrush medium so what we're going to do is we're going to just put up just a very light dusting of white over here so let's go Okay, so here's the stencil, paper stencil that we've cut, um, all looking nice. And I'm able to align it here with these registration marks that if you remember that I made on the original image, which is, uh, you know, if we look at this one here, um, we've got these registration marks that I drew in um, to guide me, allow me specifically to do this and to, uh, to line it up. So I wanted to cut down here and then leave these marks in so if you look at this, that's exactly what I've done. I've cut down here, I've lined my lines up here and through here and also through here. Um, and that should now give me um, an area. Now you might be asking why have I done this when I've got the, the other stencils cut? Well, I didn't ha actually have a stencil for the, um, for the highlight area. So if you look at Colin's picture here, what you can see is from the small photo, we've got, the, obviously the light is coming uh, from above and down this way. So the side of his nose and all this side of his face here um, is a lot in light. And yes, we have got some of the mid-tone stencils already cut, but I wanted to do one from paper for a couple of reasons, really. One, so I could show you that you can cut stencils like this, because you may not have access to a, you know, a plotter. Um, and I've had someone cut these for me, uh, Rob at, the UK sign forum and what I've also been able to do is rather than draw this out by hand this is actually an illustrator file outline art which I've drawn in Adobe Illustrator and then I've printed out on A4 and it just fits nicely you can see there and this was the same file that was done for the actual plotting of the stencil so let me just grab that yeah, so if you look at the um, outline artwork on here, I've not drawn this by pen or by hand. I've actually done this on the computer in um, Adobe Illustrator. You could also do it in Photoshop and export the past, but I've done this in Illustrator. And you'll see here that this is one of the um, paint masks that's been cut, and it's exactly the same file. So this has actually got a transfer tape on top so I can easily peel this off and then apply it to the surface. So I already had these paths drawn because I drew them on the computer. So what I thought I'd show you, which is another way of doing it, is I printed those out 
I've actually cut some of those by hand, which is what I've done for this bit here. And you can do that as well if you've got the print. Yeah, so if you've got a print like this, again, you can see I've got my registration marks on here for this all to be set up. You can print several copies like this and actually use a scalpel and then just cut the areas that you need to, you know, very similar to this. Um, so there's several ways that you can do it. I just thought it'd be interesting for you to see that. So you can see this lines up really nicely on top of the paint mask. So what I'm going to do now is use this uh, for this area here to drop in our nice highlight that's coming from the left down. So we'll build that highlight in here with the um, EFX white and then we'll be able to remove this and then drop in some more um, white areas down here. But this is the, the, the lightest area, so I want to be able to get this in first. And nice and loose. I mean, a paper stencil is good because it's not stuck to the surface like our, our paint mask is going to stay here to mask the outside until we've, we've got so far in. So yeah, let's take a look at that. Yeah, you can see that's very subtle in here but it's just what we needed to give us just a little bit of idea where the highlights are and what's nice is you can still slightly see the silver through the white which is quite nice that'd be nice when we drop the blue in here some of the shadows okay what i've done on this section just to show you yet another way to produce a stencil is i've just used simple ohp overhead transparency um, that you would just buy to print on you know for your normal printer and it holds its shape really nicely um, you can see i've got quite a lot of detail out here and not only that but obviously the advantage over the paper is and even over tracing paper because tracing paper tends to, to, to crinkle a little bit when it gets wet whereas this won't yeah so i'm able to actually see to line up for my registration marks uh, which is perfect again this was all printed from adobe illustrator um, outline so we know it's all registration fine so we know it's all good to go and the only downside can be is when you print sometimes depending on what kind of inks your printer has in it when you're putting your hand over this i did dry it with a hairdryer but i found that the ink was still actually um, rubbing off the transparency so all i did was i flipped it over and cut it on the reverse side yeah that works fine so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in and we're going to um, lay in a few sections of other highlights uh, and build those up slowly and this is just going to give us a nice kind of working rough gu guide key really to where all the highlights and shadows need to be okay so you can see that's given us nice bit of highlight detail there so we've kind of worked up our highlights and left behind the shadow areas which is um, the silver area showing through um, and then we'll be using darks and purples to come in and do this and once we've finished with the final templates to put, kind of block in this detail here. It's very stencil as you can see at the moment, uh, but it's just building like depth nicely as you can see. Once we put, we, we've finished our final highlights, then we can take off the mask in and go freehand, which is the best part about doing this job, yeah? Okay, so this is how the transparency comes off the printer. You can see there all the nice outlines and our um, cross hatches where we can uh, line it up on on here and here and down here yeah so yeah basically uh, you see if I just if I just line this up you'll see how nicely this is going to work on here you see that all lines up nicely like that so it's really super useful for for this kind of artwork here. So I'm gonna cut this bit out now 
with my trusty scalpel and then we'll get back to painting some darker details in and move on to the blues and purples. Okay, so I've got the transparency all cut and lined up here and uh, we're going to get some blue on there now. And the blue I'm using is uh, fellow sign in blue, the tag EFX. And uh, I've just reduced that with a little bit of um, ETAC FX base, make it a little bit more transparent. And I put a little bit of Liquitex medium in, a tiny bit of water, and we should be good to go. So what, what we're actually going to be doing here is um, trying to lay in some of these uh, dark shallow details. And then hopefully soon we can stop stenciling and uh, get into doing some freehand. Like I said before, these are just blocked in areas where we need uh, a little bit of help and guidance. And uh, let's see how this blue is spraying. You can see there, hopefully the colour of it. Oh, let's spray on a bit of mask here. Look. It's a beautiful blue. Now the reason that I decided to go for blue, uh, blues and purples, is um, Damien's inherited um, Colin's Mini, and that's what this section's for, the airbag section that goes on the Mini. And the Mini's a beautiful, uh, sort of pearlescent blue, really. It's a gorgeous colour. Um, and I just thought, well, that'd be really nice to maybe do this, you know, do this in a nice blue. Okay, so we just cut another one there for some mid-tone colours. Just the shades here in the moustache, a little bit of shadow under here, and the, um, the shadow over the bridge of the nose and under the quiff of the hair and into the eyes, a little bit of cheekbone. That's all going to be faded back. So as you can see, using these stencils is just a, a really great way of, you know, starting to build shape, tone, uh, detail, um, shadow area. It's a little bit tricky on this curved surface, which is why I had to have this elaborate way of lining it all up together. And, you know, because, I mean, every job is important, but this to me is especially important. So it was integral to get the basic block layout of Colin, you know, correct, because it is relatively small. And then we can go in and do lots more freehand work now. Now we've got basically the building blocks of of the portrait we've got somewhere firm and solid to start from we've got a nice base that we put down first with all our white so the blue's gone onto that really lovely and really you know working from light to dark in this area and then back to light again at the end when we come back in to do all the highlights over the top for me on this job anyway specifically was the best way of doing this so that's looking great i hope you'll all agree it's very stencily at the moment but we can fix that. So, 
Let's move on to stage two, where I'm going to start filling in the hair details down here and um, uh, wispy hair details here, put in some of the um, shade detail around here and start to really neaten all this up and, and bring it a little bit more 3D. Okay, let's crack on to the next section.